Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to the channel. Today's video is an instructional video. I'm going to show you guys step by step how to use an OBD2 scanner. I would like to first and foremost thank KZ for sending me a brand new one. That way I can show you guys how to use this thing properly and some of the cool features that it has. Now if you guys would like to win one, go ahead and click this link right up there. It's going to have instructions for you at the end of that video of how you guys can enter a contest to win one. Now let's go ahead, jump inside the vehicle and check this out for some codes and some errors that it's having. You want to make sure that the vehicle is turned off and then take your plug for the OBD2 scanner and plug it right into the port. It only goes in one way. Now, if you guys don't have an OBD2 scanner, you guys have a vehicle that is older than 2002, you may have an OB scanner, or you guys may have a manufacturer plug. If that's the case, check out this video over here, and it's going to have a history on OBD2 scanners, and then hopefully you guys can find the one that you need. With the OBD2 scanner successfully plugged in, the next thing you're going to want to do is turn the truck on to position 1. That is just clicking it over. So that way the engine is not running, but all the lights are on. With the screen like this, you'll be able to go ahead and work the KZ OBD2 scanner. So using these buttons right here, we're going to go to that right there. So if let's say you were over here, you're just going to press the left and then click OK. So now it's going to run the test. It's going to be a quick result. It's going to tell me that the engine light is on and that there is two codes that are happening. And it's going to ask me, do you want to erase previous stored information? So if I use this on a previous car and I have some information on there, do I want to override it? And the answer is yes, I do, because I don't care about the last test I did. So we're going to go into this section now where it's going to give me two options. We're going to click the first one. So you're going to press that one right there. Click read code. Stored codes. So it's telling me that there is code number P0102, mass airflow volume, circuit low. And then we press down, we go to the next one, or press right. It says here, intake air temperature sensor circuit high. So using this information, you're able to diagnose from the top of your head that you have something with the mass airflow going on. Maybe the mass airflow sensor has gone bad because it is able to read the temperature and it is what calculates the amount of air that is going into the vehicle. Now see here where it says circuit low, that means that there is a problem with power going to that particular unit. So what we're gonna do now is replace the mass airflow sensor and then we're gonna see whether or not the check engine light will go away. But let's say you think that is just the problem. Let's say you think that, oh, uh, I replaced it, so this code is just an old code on the vehicle. So press escape. You're going to press escape again. Click erase codes. Yes. Yes, you wish to erase that. I will explain that later. So now your codes are done. Your codes are completely erased. And as you guys can see here, it didn't resolve anything. The truck just went ahead and threw the code again. So that means that there is legitimately a problem with the mass airflow sensor. Now, if you guys get a code and you guys are uncertain of what does it mean, the best thing that I can do to tell you is go on Google, type in, for instance, your make, your model, and then your, the code followed right after it. So let's say you guys have a 2002 Toyota Prius and it's throwing out a code. So you're going to type in Toyota Prius and then that code and 9 out of 10 somebody has already gone through the trouble of posting the problems with that car and that particular code. So it's going to help you guys out big time. Let me go ahead open up the engine and fix the mass airflow sensor and then we'll see if that was legitimately the issue. So with the engine on I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some cool tricks that you guys can do with an OBD2 scanner. We're going to go ahead and turn on the scan. It's going to spit out a quick result that there's no check engine light, no codes. It's a spark type of ignition. Uh, sure, we can erase the data. 
and then go right here to bank one and we're gonna do some cool stuff so going back here by live data we're able to see what the vehicle is seeing right now you just click view data and then you guys can see the complete data set and it will tell you everything about the car what's going on this is the live readout from the engine you guys can see the loads the shift points the long shift the RPMs the sparks the degree of the spark um, you, there's literally every square inch of this vehicle you guys can see now this is live data so by pressing the gas it's going to change the values and you guys are able to see how the vehicle is functioning uh, the evaps the fuels the warm-ups everything's on here you guys can literally scan all aspects of the vehicle let's go ahead and exit this screen go back go back with the escape button uh, you guys can view freeze frame right over here now there's no freeze frames that I've saved on the vehicle so there's nothing there you guys can run an onboard monitoring test and you guys can select the manufacturer this is a Chevrolet so let's go ahead and run an onboard test on oxygen sensor right here click OK it's reading the test results and then here we have a bunch of different tests that we guys can do it's going to tell you what the test is and what the results will be so let's go ahead and run a random test let's do O2 sensor delayed here we go there's the value for it and overall systems okay so you guys are able to test the independent aspects of the vehicle as long as it's hooked up to a computer the evap you can run over here run the test system okay so you're able to check the vehicle without actually checking the actual component now let's say you guys wanted to do a component uh, so you guys wanted to see the vehicle information I'm gonna go ahead and press OK now it's gonna tell you turn the key on with the ignition off so we're gonna go ahead and bump this back just one so here we go so now in this screen you guys are able to see whether or not somebody's trying to swindle you by selling you a car and they did a VIN swap you guys can see the vehicles VIN number right there you guys can see the calibration ID these are all the calibration values from the vehicle you guys can see the ECU name so you guys can see if somebody has flashed over a different ECU onto the engine And then you guys have, lastly, the last two things, the module presence, that's telling you what, and then uh, the unit of measure, you guys can choose English or metric. So now I'm going to show you guys how to run an emissions test on this truck. For sure it is going to fail due to some modifications, but let's go ahead and do one for shits and giggles. You guys have the option of using the key strokes here and selecting that, or you guys can quickly run one by pressing this button right there. So it's going to tell you the results really, really quickly, and here you go. These are the results that I'm having issues with. I'm having issues with the fuel, issues with the catalytic converter, issues with the evap issues with the o2 issues with the hrt so there are issues here that could be related due to uh, modifications let's go ahead and exit that now you guys are also capable of running an abs and an srs test by simply pressing ok selecting the country of which the vehicle is manufactured this is chevrolet so it's good old america and then we're going to go down here to gm click OK and then we're gonna do an auto identify on the ABS should spit out one code let's see yeah sure go erase that no codes so the good news is the module that I repaired repaired it so there's no more codes there which is nice and then the SRS you guys can run an SRS test over here to see if there's something wrong you guys can click read codes and there's no codes as well so everything is good in those two departments of the vehicle now if you guys don't have a vehicle that is made in good old america you guys can go over here to europe and then you guys can browse this section over here there's a wide variety of european vehicles here 
including some that I've never even heard of, like a scada and a seat. And then you guys can go over here to Asia, and you guys got your nice Asian flair. You guys got a bunch of different Asian vehicles over here, including some that don't exist anymore, like this one. So you guys have a lot of vehicles to pick from. Now let's say you guys have a code that your buddy has on his car and he wants to know what does it mean. You guys can do a quick lookup of it and then it'll tell you, boom, this is your code. This is possibly your problem. So mass airflow, circuit range, performance. So there's uh, something going on with the mass airflow sensor like this vehicle. You guys may want to check that out. And of course you guys can run different codes on it and it'll tell you different values cylinder 11 good god v12 <laughs> so yes you guys can run a bunch of different code checks on this now let's say you guys are done running your checks and you guys want to see your data from the comfort of the air conditioning inside your house you guys can click review data inside your house and then you guys can see everything from the onboard test of the vehicle that you ran. Everything here, you guys can check it out. You guys can see all your data. And then uh, same thing with the vehicle information. You guys can see this from the comfort of your air conditioning. You guys can see the VIN number. You guys can see the ECU. You, you have access to everything right here. The next thing you guys have available is the print data. Let's say you guys wanted to print something, have something on paper and bring somewhere. You guys can print the data. Make sure that you guys follow the instructions inside the user's manual, which is downloading the software and then plugging this in to your computer. And then you guys are able to print your data over here. You guys can actually print all if you guys wanted to. And of course, the next thing is the setup. You guys can set this thing up. You guys can set the language. There's English, Spanish, French. There you guys can configure your monitors. You guys can change your unit of measure. Let's say maybe you guys don't understand what a foot is and you guys want to switch over to metric. Um, key beeps, you guys can turn those on and off. I don't like these key beep sounds, so I'm going to leave that off. You guys can run a status check on the vehicle and update the module yes you guys can update the module you guys have to plug it into the computer and use the software provided but you can update it now lastly the very last selection is about and that is just going to tell you the manufacturer and the unit number you guys have along with the version and software stuff so hopefully this showed you guys some tricks you guys can do with this obd2 scanner and you guys can apply it to uh, other obd2 scanners if you guys have them and it will help you guys out big time also hopefully you guys are considering purchasing one of these it doesn't have to be this one right here but if you guys are interested in buying this one right now the manufacturer is going to be running an amazon flash sale link is going to be down in the description section where you guys can get a great deal on this product and this is something that, like I said in my previous video, I hope everybody has one of these inside their car. You never know when you guys are going to get a code on your vehicle. And hopefully it's somewhere near your house and near your garage where you're able to make the repair yourself. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, click like. And in the meantime, take care, guys.